This section's awfully stubby. The Curse of the Daleks. Audio story. After their emergence, the earliest Daleks were directed by their first emperor to build a city for themselves, which they achieved within two months. As a safety precaution, the Daleks also magnetized the metallic sand surrounding the city, allowing them to pull it towards the city at will, covering it in a large dune that concealed it from unwanted visitors. Comic. Power play. Centuries. Before the Daleks turned their minds to universal conquest, their city on Skaro was, most of all, a storehouse of inventions. The Daleks received a mysterious transmission which they feared might be a declaration of war. Shortly thereafter, Susan, having borrowed the Doctor's TARDIS and tried to make her way to Venus, happened to instead land in the petrified jungle on Skaro. Thinking she might be responsible for the message, or, at any rate, be able to decode it for them, the Daleks took Susan prisoner and brought her back to the city. As she stalled for time and food by decoding the message very slowly, one of the Daleks grew uncharacteristically fond of her, and even the others came to have a measure of respect for her. Eventually, Susan realized the meaning of this message which had the Daleks so terrified, peace and goodwill for all. She burst out laughing, startling and even terrifying many of the Daleks, who had never heard laughter in their lives. In the confusion, Susan took her chance to run off back to the TARDIS, and, despite the pleas of the lone Dalek she had befriended, she fled Skaro. The Daleks remained on a war footing for a while before finding the translation Susan had left behind and realizing their error. Comic. The message of mystery, in the 21st century, according to the Eighth Doctor, the Daleks on Skaro entered the, static electricity, phase of their development. Prose. Alien bodies. The Time Lords knew of alternate accounts surrounding the Tal Dalek battle, though they were unsure of the accuracy of the claims. Prose, Dalek Combat Training Manual. Renegade Time Lord Iris Wild Time, who was known for living through the Doctor's past, had once stopped herself from telling the Eighth Doctor that when she had visited Skaro in her, Jane Fonda, incarnation, she had found that the petrified forest had been, overrun by recalcitrant irons in savage blue eyeshadow. She had been the one who had led the attack on the electrified city only it had been more terrifying due to the Daleks' experiments with hallucinogens and weird sex. She later likened it to something out of the 1960s, specifically something by Philip K. Dick. Prose. Bafflement and devotion. Another account showed that the incarnation contemporary to Panda had found herself on a dead planet for a bring-a-bottle party. She had stumbled through the petrified forest clutching her bag from the offy, falling over a horrid, dusty lizard thing. When she arrived at her destination, she had found that all the doors were closed tight and the lights were off, and she was unable to get the attention of the inhabitants inside. She decided to get drunk, and she left empty bottles around the entrance. She then ran into a bunch of blonde fellas, who helped her find her way back to her bus. Prose. From wild time with love. One another occasion, her companion Panda once had noted that they had lived through events multiple times, often going back to with gusto then with ennui, erased from history, reinstated, improved upon, and then lived through once more for good measure. Prose. Enter wild time. When the doctor first encountered them, the Daleks were stranded in their city on Skaro, as their casings were powered by static electricity channeled by the metal floors of the city, preventing them from leaving it. They eventually found that the Tiles had also survived what was known as the Neutronic War. After discovering that they had become dependent on the background radiation to the point of the anti-radiation drugs that Susan Foreman gave them being lethal to them, the Daleks attempted to vent radiation from the nuclear reactors into the atmosphere which would have left them as the only living species on Skaro. The first doctor and his companions led a Tal assault and deactivated their power, believing that he had wiped out the Daleks altogether in the process, the necessity of which crime he lamented, though he saw no other way. TV. The Daleks. One account suggested that this Tal Dalek battle had taken place 18 months prior to the 31st of July 2065, or in early 2064. Prose. Peaceful Tals ambushed. The Doctor later theorized that they were able to return because the Daleks had other colonies on Skaro, which they did indeed. Prose. Doctor Who and the Dalek invasion of Earth. Although he had also temporarily believed the Daleks he encountered on 22nd century Earth were from a point in history prior to the supposed destruction of the city's Daleks. TV. The Dalek invasion of Earth. Through Ace's improper usage of an Omega device however, the very Daleks who had faced the Doctor were briefly resurrected, and, having learned of the existence of life on other planets from the Visitor, 
they vowed to conquer the universe and master time travel in order to regain their power. When Bernice Summerfield and the Seventh Doctor restored Scaro's history to its proper course, the latter noted that someone would soon breach the city and reactivate it. Audio. The Lights of Scaro. That someone was the Tal scientist Triana who, in the decades after the Tal Dalek battle, found the Dalek Supreme, who had survived in the city's incubation level thanks to its emergency protocols. Manipulating Triana, the Supreme was able to raise a new generation of Daleks, whom the Supreme eventually intended to lead to the conquest of other worlds, only for the return of the Doctor and his companions to see the destruction of the Dalek city. The Tals however were confident that this had not been the end of the Daleks. Audio. Return to Skaro. Although Account 1 depicted the city already existing, centuries, before the Daleks turned their minds to universal conquest, comic, the message of mystery, Another account stated that it was a short time after the construction of the Dalek city that Skaro was visited by a Kratorian spacecraft piloted by the slave trader Kaist. Comic. Powerplay. The entry of the Kratorian spacecraft in Skaro's atmosphere was detected by the space agency, who reported upon it on 13 February 2065. Prose. Fireball surrenders. The space news agency would release more information on the, confused, Kratorian, Dalek conflict on Skaro seven days later. Prose. Titan declares war. As Kaist was there to mine the metallic sand, he soon uncovered the hidden Dalek city, and the Daleks decided to take advantage of this to steal the secrets of space travel from him. Though the ship managed to escape Skaro, the Daleks were undeterred, and, in possession of its schematics, set about crafting spaceships of their own. Comic. Power play. The work was delayed by the lack of available materials, as space travel demanded that the ships withstand heat greater than what ordinary Dalekinium could bear. A scientist, Dalek Zeg, accidentally discovered a new and stronger Dalekinium alloy, Metalert, which could withstand a sun's heat. As his casing had been the first thing transmuted to Metalert, he became immune to other Daleks' death rays, and, boasting that he was invincible, demanded to be made emperor. The Emperor tried to have Zeg destroyed by the Black Dalek leader's superior firepower, but as the scientist Rebellious survived even that, they went to the Brain Machine, who ordered that the Golden Emperor and Zeg duel for the title. After numerous failed attempts, the Emperor succeeded in killing Zeg using liquid air, which was 312 degrees below freezing. From the ruins of Zeg's casing, the Emperor acquired the secrets of Metalert, but later declared that it was still flawed and they were not ready to build flying machines. Comic. Duel of the Daleks.